Hi everybody! Hi. 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 My, name, my name is Ronaldo and um, <laughs> I am Holly's assistant. So she said, come on over to my house and we're going to go on a journey. So I'm like dressed for the Pacific Northwest, right? <laughs> yes. And then she said, no, 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 not that type of journey. And I said, oh, that's really disappointing. It's but anyway, she inscripted me to help you get prepared for this show. So um, first thing, I've got to um, I've got to get some beanbag chairs for a couple of people who might want to sit up front, and uh, I'll just get those real quick. Carry that. You have a wide load. <laughs> <laughs> necessary for the success of the show. So I'm going to need some um, jar wranglers 
would, um, this is going to be a front row kind of a roll. What you do is you'll hold this jar, and at a certain point in the story, I'm going to either have you take something out, or someone else will take it out of the jar. And this one is a positive attribute for a person. So anyone around here, you can hold this one. Excellent. And um, you know what's cool about that? Is that the person next to that one gets to hold this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, who likes going places? <laughs> Oh, okay, great. Can you hold this jar? Okay, that would be fantastic. Um, and now we uh, have a name for a dog. Okay. Great. Um, something scary? Okay. Excellent. We have uh, three more. A dream, goal, or aspiration. Now, this is a biggie. Who is up for a biggie? Great. And since you're up for a biggie, how about an obstacle? Okay, yes, that is a tough one. And then we have a name for a sage. Name for a sage right here, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have all the jar wranglers, and Holly will be wrangling one herself. Now we need the actors. So the first, oh no, it's this backpack again. These fancy backpacks are so hard. And the water bottle is leaking. And, okay, let's just try and get this off. Here we go. Okay, we got that. All right, so. Um, well, the first role is that of a dog. <laughs> so who can play the dog? You want to play the dog? Okay, but um, you have to audition for the dog. So let's hear the dog when it's happy. Pretty good? Pretty good. Yeah, okay, the dog when it's sad. Ooh. And the dog when it's frightened. Oh, you win! You win! She wins! someone is here with a grandchild, and I think it's a grandmother, so we got a pretty easy one there. Okay, good. Now, the next role we have is that of a mother. So the mother, again, wants you to be prepared, just like Ronaldo, the mother wants you to be prepared. So who could be the mother? Okay, good. Could we just pass that back to the far corners of the earth? All right, the next one's really fun. Does anybody have a crazy auntie in their family? <laughs> no, no. So the crazy auntie gets to wear this fun, fun, fun hat. What could be better than this? Right here. <laughs> right here. <laughs> Excellent. And then, um, oh, geez. <laughs> wise person and here's the secret you don't actually have to be wise because if you just touch this golden egg the wisdom will come to you anyone willing can you feel smarter already I thought so see okay good now we just have one more role it's quite an active role it's the role of a poet now you can be a good poet or you can be a bad poet. The only thing is you just have to be a fast poet. <laughs> and if you get writer's block, I'm sure everyone here will help you. Anyone willing to give it a try? Yes! The guy who's going to have hair in his face. Excellent! Thank you so much. So I've given him the box of markers. I'm going to stow this big backpack. Good. 
Now, um, just two more quick announcements. One is, this show is being videotaped for Holly's review and her own use. It's possible that something super magical will happen here tonight and she'll want to put it out um, beyond herself, at which point she will ask for your permission. So what I'm saying is you will not be put out there on the internet without having the chance to say yes or no to that. And then the last thing is just a rule for improv comedy. Improv comedy doesn't have a lot of rules, but one of them is that you always say yes. So if something happens that's a little crazy, we don't rewind, we don't do it again, we don't do anything except move forward and integrate it into the story. So I'll ask you to help Holly move the story forward and always say yes. yes. <clears throat> Are you ready for the show? Yes. yes. I'll go get her! <laughs> from the Pier Gint Suite.
cart she set off. And we need to know how she was getting where she was going. Could someone <coughs> let us know her mode of transportation? Spaceship. Yes, because where better to become a billionaire than in outer space? <laughs> <laughs> so she packed her bag, and she got in her spaceship, and she brought her dog. And her dog was named... Mist. 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 Emiola and Mist, billionaires or bust, in the spaceship. So they waved goodbye to everyone and they took off and they started going and they were cruising around and they felt a little sick and like, oh, but then they relaxed and they kept going and it, you have to travel pretty far to Billionaireville up in space. So it was taking a while. <laughs> and it was a darn good thing she brought her easy crosswords. Because there's just not a lot to do when you're just sitting in a spaceship. <laughs> so they were going along when all of a sudden they encountered an obstacle. <gasps> An orange cone. <laughs> <laughs> now you might be familiar with these orange cones from driving on 35th Avenue <laughs> down in the University District. But this was not an orange cone like that. This was a mammoth or <coughs> cone. And truth be told, she wasn't all that familiar with steering a spaceship. Her spaceship started sounding the alarm. <coughs> she was about to intersect with the giant orange space cone. And in times of stress, she always turns to her dog, Mist. So she started petting her dog, petting her dog, and then, miraculously, the voice of her grandmother came into her head, and she remembered the grandmother's advice that she had gotten at the party. Live for the moment. <laughs> for the moment. Yes. And she said, why am I worried about this giant orange cone? I'm just remembering a scene in Harry Potter where they just drive their trolleys right into platform nine and three quarters. So that's what she did. She just relaxed. She kept going and, living for the moment, right through. So, once again, she settled back in. Dog she started doing some crosswords. And then they encountered another obstacle. A flaming hula hoop. <laughs> and at this point she started to cry because, you know, this journey was a lot harder than she thought it was going to be. And she felt very sad that she was not able to just zoom right up there, get the billion dollars, and zoom right back. To help us connect with Hemiola's sadness, we'll be playing the second movement from the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto. Do you have the Kleenexes ready? Yes, I do. Does everyone need
everybody in the audience was crying. <laughs> because it's just so hard to become a billionaire because you have to deal with things like flaming hula hoops. <laughs> that she had been given at the going away party. It's small. Have another. <laughs> <laughs> so she started thinking, well, why is my mother's advice coming to me with this flaming hula hoop? And she saw a button on her spaceship that said, duplicate. <laughs> <laughs> so she focused her screen on the flaming hula hoop and pressed that button. And then there was another. And there was another. <clears throat> the magical thing was that when a new hula hoop came, they all got smaller. And so pretty soon there were about 25 or 30 flaming hula hoops all around, but they were basically the size of a speck of dust. Mm which made it very easy to zoom by in your spaceship. <laughs> now, sometimes the hardest kind of obstacles are those that happen in our own head. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. And self-doubt started to creep into her awareness. And she started thinking about her own attributes. And it wasn't very pretty what she was hearing. piece of music began to play, and it was his eye, Ballad for Solo Violin. Mm -hmm.
secretion. <laughs> Especially since the air conditioning seemed to be failing in this spaceship. Especially since the air conditioning <laughs> seemed to be failing in this spaceship. <laughs> Not only the air conditioning to deal with, but all of her self doubts. So she started petting her dog like she usually does in times of stress. She starts to relax. And then the voice of her crazy auntie came into her head. And she remembered the piece of advice from the going away party. Buy low, sell high. <laughs> right. Now, is it really true that I have a bad nose and bad eyebrows and I'm not kind or honest? That's like low. That's like a low opinion that I've sold myself on. Or did I buy it there? <laughs> And then she just had to hear that voice one more time, so she closed her eyes and heard the voice one more time. Buy low, sell high. Yes, yeah, so she bought into this story of all these things that were wrong with her. And then she said, you know what, if I'm going to sell myself as a billionaire, I'm going to need to change my attitude. And she started to think. I got the cute button nose. I'm kind. I'm honest. I'm considerate on all those great things. I think I can do this. So, she kept going on her spaceship, traveling along, doing a crossword here, now and then. Things were going pretty well until something scary happened. <laughs> on Supreme Court. <laughs> Ha <laughs> 
Thank you. 
want to do. <laughs> and so she and her dog Mist, in great glee and joy, set back for Earth and went to pursue her own true passion. Thank you so much for joining us here today. You've been a lovely audience. You've had fantastic suggestions all along. And I just appreciate everyone's willingness to, uh, uh, Himiola! <laughs> Himiola! Bonjour! <laughs> what have you been up to? I just went on a journey. You did? Yes. And well, what are you doing now? Well, I'm following my dream. Your dream? What? What is your dream? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> World domination. <laughs> World domination. <laughs> okay, great. So, um, hey, how about a song? How about we play a song about you and, and um, your passion and world domination. Fine? Yeah. yeah, okay, good. So at this point, we'll need our poet to come up because um, actually, this is a sing along song. And um, so each blank here is for one syllable. So it's like, I love something, something, something like one syllable on each, and it should have something to do with. Uh, Kimiola and the world domination, and um, it doesn't have to be good, so no pressure. <laughs> just fast. Just fast, yeah. Um, okay. And so this is all one poem? Uh, yeah, so the, it's this one first, and then it goes right into the second one. Okay. Okay. And if you want, you can get some suggestions from the crowd, or you can just do it. I love sweet and sour. <laughs> <laughs> nice.
Dwight Beckmeyer, our expert drummer. <laughs>